Hello, welcome to this lesson of Mastering Statistics. I hope you're enjoying the course so far. I'm enjoying teaching it. I'm enjoying making these concepts a little bit easier to understand for you. Uh, here we're going to talk about something called the normal probability distribution. The normal distribution. I think I kind of hinted um, in the previous section that we were going to end up talking, or maybe it was in the first section, that we're going to end up talking about something called the normal distribution. I cannot stress enough how important the normal distribution is to statistics. There are some things that are kind of like cute to learn and understand, and then there are some things that are super important, and one of them is the normal probability distribution. Almost all the time when, uh, when they take these presidential surveys of small samples, and then they try to extrapolate it, uh, there's some sort of normal distribution involved. And you know, usually when you're trying to look at uh, the way in which things are distributed in their length or their weight, um, you know, the IQ distribution of people in the country, grades. I mean, there's so many examples. The normal probability distribution pops up everywhere. It just, it's kind of ingrained into the fabric of the world we live in, is sort of the way you need to think about it. So um, I'm going to outline what it is with a practical example, draw a picture. I'm not going to draw much on the board. It's mostly going to be a lecture. I'll draw a picture to show you what it looks like. And then we'll kind of compare and contrast it to what we learned in the last section when we also got introduced to these probability distributions. So let's say you go to the supermarket and you pick a, a watermelon. Now there's a whole giant shelf of watermelon. Maybe there's a giant, you know, uh, uh, fenced off area where they've got like 200 watermelons. And you randomly pick one. So you don't really look at it, you just close your eyes and you grab one. All right? Now you know that there are watermelons of all different shapes and sizes. Uh, but you also know that watermelons can't be as big as a truck, right? And watermelons, unless they're baby watermelons, they're not going to be like as small as a ping pong ball. I'm not talking about babies. I'm talking about adult mature watermelons that are in the grocery store ready for you to pick. So what we call mature watermelons. Let's say you pick one of these guys at random and then you get a tape measure and you measure its length from end to end along its longest direction. And you measure that length and you record that number. Right, and then let's go. Let's say you go back and do that again, and get a second watermelon, and then you get another watermelon. All randomly, each time you do it randomly, you get a, a result that is its basically its length. So you could say the random variable here that we care about is the length of the watermelon, because the experiment I'm doing every time is randomly grabbing a watermelon and measuring its length. The outcome of the experiment, which we're calling our random variable x is how long that thing is. Now we know that we're never going to get, almost never going to get the exact same length. Even if they look like they're pretty close, they're probably going to differ by a fraction of an inch or a very small amount. But we also know that if we look at hundreds or thousands or maybe millions of watermelons, that there will be some trends. We're going to figure out that most of the watermelons are going to have an average length around a certain value. Right? And we know that some watermelons are going to be a little bit bigger than that, and some watermelons are going to be a little bit smaller than that, but still, there'll be an average value, and most of the watermelons will cluster around that. Now, you may have the crazy watermelon that's giant compared to the average, and you may have the, also the crazy watermelon that's a, a puny little watermelon compared to the average, but still, there'll be an average value, much like grades in a room, there's an average value of the grades. Some kids are going to get hundreds or 95s, some kids are going to get 66s, but there'll be an average value. But getting back to our watermelon, if we want to represent the spread of these watermelons, or I should say maybe the probability of drawing a watermelon with a certain length, we can draw it um, in terms of what we call a normal distribution. We say that the lengths of these watermelons are normally distributed. So in a 